This program has been made possible by the friends and partners of Joyce Meyer Ministries. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. And where love is, it says in 1 John, God abides. So you want to walk in God's presence? You want to be close to God? You want to feel His presence in your life? Go love somebody. Maybe you need to tell people what love is. Because <laughs> see, we love ice cream and we love our cat. <laughs> and we love the movies and we love our house and we love God. We love people. And <laughs> you don't love ice cream. You may like it, you may like the way it tastes, but we don't. We don't love it. And I, I think we need to understand what love really is. Love is something that you can see and feel and it can touch you and it can touch other people and it can change lives. It can change you and it can change the people that you love. Let me tell you something. If you're a Christian, you're already taken care of. You're going to heaven. So uh, let me tell you something, really for all intent and purposes, you're a done deal. Your name's in the book, your mansion's being built. And you're here for a reason. And it's not to keep trying to make yourself happy, it's to let your light shine. Come on, be salt and be light. Let your life make somebody else thirsty, be a light in somebody else's darkness. Get yourself off your mind, and I'm telling you, God will do more for you in five minutes than you could have done in a whole lifetime. And you'll be so happy, you won't hardly be able to stand yourself. I know, because I've tried it both ways. And I've been in pursuit of a love walk for lots of years, and I tell you, if you really want to walk in love, you got to aim for it, go for it, chase it, study it, Pursue it because everything in our natural, old, fleshly nature is me, 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 me. Am I right? What about way back up there in the top? Am I right? Now, see, I know when you come to something like this, you'd rather maybe have somebody tell you how awesome everything is going to be in your future and all the miracles God's gonna do for you and how you're gonna be famous and stand on the platform someday. And <laughs> here I am telling you to get yourself off your mind and give everything away. But you know, you, do you really, do you wanna be happy? How many of you really wanna be happy? Okay, well, this is the way you get there. Because I tried the other way and now I've tried this and this works so much better. I mean, I can honestly tell you, and you, you try this, if you wake up and you're feeling depressed and you, can, you, you think, eh, this is gonna be a bad day, go, go park yourself somewhere in a chair, sit down and just say, God, show me what I can do for somebody else today. Now, I'm, I'm not making this up, I do this. God, show me who I can be a blessing to today. And I don't know, maybe an hour later, somebody will come to your heart and you just feel like you should call them and just say, I just want you to know how much God loves you and you're an important person and don't ever let the enemy make you think anything different. And how many times have I had people say, you have no idea how much that meant to me. Oh, you changed my day, you changed my life today. Isn't it amazing that you could you like to play around on the internet? Go ahead and send your texts and your tweets and your twerks and whatever they are. But <laughs> say something worth hearing. Amen? Don't write me when this is over and tell me everything you didn't like. I'll tell you why. They're not going to let me see it anyway. <laughs> Ha ha.
My staff protects me and helps me stay happy because everybody's happier when mama's happy. Okay, and I want you to listen to this. First John 4, 8. I mean, this is, if you don't have any reverential fear of God, this ought to give you a little. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. And where love is, it says in 1 John, God abides. So you want to walk in God's presence? You want to be close to God? You want to feel his presence in your life? Go love somebody. You say, well, what is love? Well, somebody asked one little boy that, and he said, love is when grandma loves to have her toenails painted but she gets arthritis and she can't bend over anymore. So grandpa bends over and paints her toenails for her all the time. And he did it even after he got arthritis in his fingers. <laughs> Love is just, it's a whole lot of little stuff that builds people up and encourages people. It's a kind word, it's a smile. It's paying a single mother's rent for a month. Stop praying for God to help somebody with something that you could help them with and just don't want to. Come on, I'm gonna say that again. Stop praying for God to help somebody with something that you could help them with and just don't want to. Wow, one group of ministers were praying about a conference that they were gonna have and asking God to give them the money to pay for that conference. And another minister got up and said, wait a minute, we don't need to pray that. All of us together can easily pay for this conference. We'll just take care of that and ask God to do some other stuff that we can't do. Amen. You don't have to sit around and be unhappy every day. Just figure, see what you can do for somebody else. So I'm just gonna throw a question out. Don't answer me out loud, just go home and ponder it. What are you doing to make somebody else's life better? Well, I go to church. Well, whoopee. I got a bumper sticker. I wear my Jesus pin. I take my Bible to work. But what are we doing? <laughs> Come on. Faith without works is dead. Works without faith is dead, but faith without works is dead. Nobody can see your faith if you don't help them. That's why we're so big on the missions that we do out of the country because these people are hurting so bad, it's not gonna do any good to go and tell them Jesus loves you. They don't know what that is. They don't know what does that mean? But if we go in and love them, if we go in and dig them a water well, and if we provide clean water for their village, and we feed their kids, and we build a school, and then they say, why are you doing this? Then we can tell them because Jesus has loved us into wholeness and he sent us here to show you his love. Well, now they can feel that love so it means something to them. Love is not theory, it's not talk, it's not a word that we throw around, it is something. And the Bible says it clearly, love is patient, kind, meek and humble always believes the best of every person. Boy, could we use that. <laughs> is not easily offended, is not touchy, is not fretful, is not resentful, is not self-seeking. 
Love never quits. It never gives up. And I love this. Love never fails. You can take the meanest person on earth, and if you show them the love of God long enough, it'll break them down. Very quick, shortest version I can possibly do. You've probably heard the story before, but I got to get it in here. My father sexually abused me for, I don't know, 12, to, that's all I ever remember. So I don't know if it was 12 years or 15 years, but it was all the years that I can remember being at home. This, these were not an isolated handful of cases. This was week in and week out, week in and week out. My mother knew what he was doing. I told her when I was nine, he said I was lying. She believed him. She caught him when I was 14. She walked out of the house, came back two hours later, never said another word about it. So my father abused me. My mother abandoned me to the, to the abuse because she was afraid. She was afraid. And so I hated my father. Oh God, I hated him. I prayed for him to die. I prayed for my mother to leave him. I was born again when I was nine years old. And that's, that's the thing that really kept me from going insane. And I would lay in bed at night and think, and I know this was the spirit of God in me. I would think someday I'm going to do something great. I had no idea what it was, but my father told me I'd never amount to anything and I couldn't ever even make it without him. And I'd lay there and think, someday I'm gonna do something great. But I could not wait to get out of that house. So the minute I was 18, I left home, married the first guy that came along and paid any attention to me because I thought nobody would ever want me because I was used merchandise. And I knew that was a mistake. He was dumber than I was. And that's what hurting messed up people do. They marry other people that are messed up and you just mess each other up more and then have kids and mess them up. And thank God we got away from each other before we had, we had one child, but he's now the head of our world mission, so God fixed him. And interestingly enough, I named him David and then met Dave. God has a plan. Even in the middle of your biggest mess, God's got a plan. And there's nothing you've done that he cannot redeem and work out for the good of his kingdom if you'll let him. Come on, you are not a hopeless case. You are not a lost cause. It is not too late for you. Now there, there was some sugar. Did you like that? Oh, I tell you what, I just feel like if Christians don't start acting the way they're supposed to act, that I am just going to bust. Our first response to offense should be forgiveness. So I got away from my dad's state of, you know, I didn't want nothing to do with him. You know, we had to go a little bit on Christmas and a little bit on whatever, but I saw them the least amount that I could, couldn't wait to get away from them. You understand? I hated him. You got that? Well, when I started becoming a serious Christian, I prayed the Christian, I forgive you prayer. <laughs> but I hadn't really forgiven him. Because when you really forgive, there are some things you have to do to work through it. <laughs> You forgive as a decision, not a feeling. You pray for the person who hurt you. It's very hard to pray for somebody every day and keep hating them. God knows what he's doing. And you pray for them to be blessed and you're thinking at the same time, but I don't want them to be blessed. But the first thing God blesses them with is some revelation of what they've done. You bless them. Uh-oh. What does that mean? Well, first of all, it means you don't get to talk unkind about them anymore. 
And secondly, if they're in trouble, you'll help them. Uh-oh, I've lost you again. You need more sugar. <laughs> okay, so my mother's like 77. My dad's 80. They're both on walkers. Things aren't going well. They live in southeast Missouri, like a three and a half hour drive away from us. They didn't have good doctors there. And it, so I'm praying one morning, God, who can I help? <laughs> so I'm just going to tell you, praying that's a little dangerous. <laughs> and I felt the Lord, or the devil, I wasn't sure who it was. I'm telling you the truth. Put in my heart to move my parents to St. Louis, buy them a house, get them a decent car, and make sure they were taken care of until they died. I rebuke you, Satan. Come on. I thought there is no way that God would ask me to do that. And I said to God, what did they ever do for me? <laughs> well, that's just the whole point, isn't it? God does stuff for people who didn't care about him at all. <laughs> Come on, is anybody still breathing out there? See, I know if, if you can just see this, and yes, I can get back up. <laughs> I don't know why I'm down here, but I just feel like saying, please, for your own sake, get this. As long as you stay angry and mad and full of bitterness and resentment, and selfish and self-centered, the devil has got you exactly where he wants you. And the people who hurt you continue to hurt you every day of your life. But when you let it go, the burden lifts and you're free for God to get involved and intervene and start doing what you can't do. So I thought, well, I'm gonna go ask Dave. Dave's not gonna spend that kind of money on them. And he said, well, if God told you to do it, you better do it. I thought, anyway, long story short, we did it. And, uh, you know, for three years, my dad still, he just, stayed as mean as a snake. He didn't say, thank you, oh, you're wonderful, I appreciate this. He was just like, well, what else are you gonna do, Lois? But after three years, got a phone call one morning, my mom said, your dad's been crying for about two or three weeks, and he wants to talk to you. Okay, now, he's 80, and I don't know how old I was by then, but, you know, probably over 50, and he had never apologized to me, never. And when I went over, he was crying, and he said, I want to apologize to you for what I did to you when you were a kid. And so I told him I forgave him. He looked at Dave, and he said, I'm sorry, Dave, most men would have killed me, and you've never been anything but just nice to me. You've never shown me anything but love. And we took care of them, and they lived a long time. <laughs> well, I'm just telling you the truth. They were in such bad shape, you know, I thought... <laughs> through the whole assisted living thing when they had to sell the house, get assisted living. 
And then they couldn't even do that anymore. We had to go into the nursing home. And I mean, those things are expensive. And then I had a widowed aunt who was my mother's sister and my uncle who had already died was my dad's brother. And so I promised my uncle when he was on his deathbed that I would take care of her. So at one time I had paying for three people in nursing home care. Okay, now look at me. Did I want to do it? No. Did I like doing it? No. Was it fun? No. Did I like spending that much money on three people who had never really done anything for me? No. But I did it for God. And I did it because it was the right thing to do. Now listen to me. When are we going to start doing what's right because it's right and not because we're going to get something out of it? Many times to do what's right, it's going to cost you and it's going to hurt and it's going to require sacrifice. But I'm going to tell you, and I mean this with all my heart, that is the single most powerful thing that I've ever done. And it was the worst blow that I have ever given the devil in my years of living. And I didn't even know it. My dad got saved. I baptized him. And when he came up out of the baptismal fount, walked across the front of the church on his walker, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And you know what God whispered? You thought you were buying a house, but you bought a soul. Come on. And you know what? He's hearing me tonight, and he's happy for the message. And he says, hey, I'll see you when you get here. Now, we've all got our story. But I, I just want you to know that I know that it's not easy to forgive and to show people love that have hurt you. Love is the greatest thing in the world. I mean, it is absolutely far over and above anything else, the absolute greatest thing in the world. But love is not just a word, it's going to cost you. Joyce answers your question of the day soon, so stay with us. Well, I think many of us believe that we are living in the last days that Jesus talked about in the Bible. And in his word, it says that during that time, our love for others will grow cold. But we can overcome that by simply doing something nice for somebody every day. When we walk in real love, we will experience true joy. You can get more of what you heard today in this teaching through the offer that we have today. It's six teachings on battle strategies for a victorious life. And believe me, the devil has a strategy and we need to have our strategy too. And Jesus teaches us in his word how to do warfare. Today we're offering these six CDs, our downloads. Today's offer includes six messages of Joyce from the 2019 Love Life Women's Conference. Love is the highest form of spiritual warfare. Love is something that you can see and feel, and it can change lives. It can change you, and it can change the people that you love. When you feel powerless, don't give up. These teachings will help you build a strategy for overcoming life's challenges by applying God's Word in your daily life. I can listen to her and I can take something from it and be able to go to the Word and go, that makes sense. <laughs> God has made such a change in my life, but He's used her ministry to do it. Battle Strategies for a Victorious Life. Six teachings on CD that will help you face your enemy fearlessly and trust God to win every fight. Be sure to go online at JoyceMeyer.org and get this teaching for $30 or more. Or you can call us at 
Take the time you need and just breathe. Conquer fear and anxiety and be sweet to your soul at the Love Life Women's Conference. Get recharged through powerful messages from Joyce Meyer. You are a woman of God and women are powerful. World, watch out. Here we come. Stephen Furtick. God is fighting for you. You get his help. You get his strength. You get his miracles. Annie F. Downs. You feel like you're in the fire. I'm here to say that God is going to pull you out. Lisa Osteen Combs. He is my strong tower, and I can run to him, and I will always be saved. Dave Meyer. And music with Torrin Wells and Chris Tomlin. Join us in peachy, sun-kissed Atlanta, Georgia, or high up in the mountains of Denver, Colorado. Space is limited. Register by the end of April for special pricing at JoyceMeyer.org slash lovelife. Our question today comes from Laura in California. She says, my husband has ADHD, depression, and anxiety. My 20-year-old son has autism since he was 23 months old. I am mentally, emotionally, physically, and spiritually spent. Help me. He is the God of all comfort. And maybe she's not taking enough time to really just spend quiet time with God. And maybe It'd be hard to find it, wouldn't it? And maybe she's not taking enough time for herself to. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're in a situation like that where, I mean, there's a lot of negative and bad emotions coming at her all the time, it can drain you pretty quick. And so no matter what it takes, if it requires having somebody else come into the home to help with the child once a week, she needs some time for her to do some things that she enjoys. And then also, I highly recommend being around some really, like, funny or encouraging people mm -hmm. because she needs to separate herself from all these things that are draining her. And she's not being selfish to do that. She's not, if she falls apart, she's not gonna be able to do anybody any good. And so I really encourage her to get for herself the things that she needs and to, to make spending time with God. And when I say spending time with God, it doesn't have to be like a four-hour stretch. I mean, even if she can just start every day with 15 minutes, really trusting God that He can enable her to do what she can't do on her own without Him. We hope you enjoyed today's program. For more information, visit JoyceMeyer.org. This program has been made possible by the friends and partners of Joyce Meyer Ministries.